Ernestine Weidman on this edition of City Line called Hell in the High Rise. Please join us next on City Line. It's 12 o'clock and we're live on City Line. I'm Jackie Hall. And I'm Dan Henson. Public housing, what's right with it? According to city housing authorities, public housing provides decent housing at very nominal rents for more than 50,000 city residents. Public housing, what's wrong with it? According to many tenants in public housing and their advocates, it is the breeding grounds for criminals, roaches and rats, and a host of other problems. On today's edition of City Line, we'll be discussing public housing as it exists in Baltimore City with Pauline Watkins, of the Lex of Lafayette Court and Ernestine Weidman of La of uh, Lexington Terrace. <laughs> and Jesse Jackson gets a pretty big boost to his presidential bid. I'm T. Montier, and I'll have a full report. My name is Tim Watts, and today on the entertainment page, we meet a Baltimorean who is in a brand new movie with Mr. T. And Don King and Michael Jackson are getting ready to make some big money together. Our discussion is public housing with Pauline Watkins and Ernestine Weidman on this edition of City Line called Hell in the High Rise. Please join us next on City Line. As you know, the topic is hell in the high rise, and it has to do with public housing in Baltimore City. We recently took the City Line cameras to one of the uh, public housing units here in Baltimore City to listen to the residents tell their story. According to the Housing Authority of Baltimore City, public housing provides a decent place to live for more than 50,000 Baltimoreans and is operated by a program that is modeled nationwide encompassing five basic forms, low-rise developments, walk-up apartments, housing for senior citizens, rehabilitated housing, and high-rises, public housing has been a part of Baltimore's community development since 1937. Today, most residents are the young and the elderly. Those under 18 make up 48% of the population, while those 62 and over are 11.6%. The average family size is three persons, 50% of whom are headed by single parents. 89.3% of the residents are black, 10.7% white and others. The average income level is $3,798 as compared to $14,200 for most city residents. Public housing dwellers pay no more than 30% of their income for rent with the balance provided by federal subsidy. While a resident's rent can range as high as $190 a month, the average rent is approximately $75.71. Beyond these statistics, however, are families who, like most of us, are concerned about their family's well-being and safety. We've talked with several residents about their living conditions, and here's what they had to say. This is not a home, this is a prison. We're incarcerated. We just ain't with no bad no people out there take a town. Okay, when I came here, there was, like I say, rat mice was running everywhere. Even when I came in here, mice with no furniture in this place at all. But there was mice running in this place. And then they had the, all these holes, you know, just like somebody just chewed out the corners and stuff. 
of the walls and, and, and the roaches was just everywhere. Uh, the condition of the place is screen as you saw my screen when you come in. It's been that way since I've been here. And me and my children got cut on that because it tears our clothes and everything. But no one's fixed these things. I corked up a lot of holes in my home to keep the roaches out. It seems like the more you cork them up, the more comes out, you know. Um, uh, they come in and they, they spray. Um, I spray. If someone upstairs spray, all the roaches run to your house even though you just sprayed. So you can't, you just can't get away from them. Because I don't hardly have any holes in my house and they seem like they just come in the front door now. I had to contact um, the health department because the hygiene of the place was so terrible. We have like um, a community basement and it's cats, rats and anything else you can name under there. And um, when it rained, when I first moved in there, it rained so much and I was like sick constantly. Not only me leaning over the toilet, one of my kids over the tub because the smell of cats and that water dampness coming from the basement, it just made us sick. And I was getting to the point where I felt like I was going crazy because um, Miss Scott told me that they was going to fix the place up, you know, and like I said, I was satisfied with the place because it was more room, and that's what I needed. Um, nobody would do anything for me. So all these windows are up in here because there's too much heat. The heat is dry, and I mean, we get heat 95 to 100 degrees in here. That's too hot. And then we had to put the windows up. That keeps everybody from a cold. And they walk around here in shorts and stuff while it's cold outside. And they well, that, that bothers me, because that's them gunshots again. That's a rifle. They've been doing it too much every day. Uh, oh, no, where was that? <clears throat> they do a lot of shooting around here during the day, broad daylight. You never, I never seen who was doing the shooting, but right in the parking lot, they'd be shooting broad daylight. Little kids would be outside. People be running behind the trees, you know. But um, I've never seen uh, too many people get uh, you know, arrested. I start writing letters. I wrote a letter to WBAL. I wrote a letter to Karen Mitchell. I also sent a letter to the Housing Authority. Okay, um, after I got one reply, and that was from Karen Mitchell. Um, after that, I waited a while, and um, I got a letter from my son's doctor. One, stating his condition and what he think is causing it, which was the hygiene and and roaches and malts and all these things that he was allergic to. He, at that time, requested that they move us. After he developed the rare infection, he demanded us to be moved from that unit. That was in um, August. We are still waiting to be moved. Now, I realize that the security guards are mostly women, and they don't have no authority, even the men don't even have authorities to really get out there and say, hey, you can't come in, uh, or anything like that. Now, the lady was out there in the booth, and then she asked the gentleman who he came to see, and he told her well, none of her damn business. She said, well, uh, what's your name, sir? She said, but he said, damn, you, my, my name, they just opened the MF door. And right away, she opened the door. Now, who knows what was on his mind? Who knows if he lived there or not? Or was he going there to harm somebody? That's what I'm saying. That, that I see with my own eyes. And that's bad, because that means that everybody can come in from whoever, wherever, and walk in out this building. I'm scared when I get off the elevators at night. I'm scared someone's going to jump behind me. And I'm just, I'm confused, you know. I'm, I'm confused, you know. Sometimes I be wanting to hurt myself because I'm just scared, and they don't want to help me. There's no place for the children to play. You're stuck in these little bitty walls here and it's cemented like a prison, and you're sealed in. This is like a coffin, you're sealed in. As far as people bring your grocery, you have a time getting your grocery because the elevator is constantly broke. Or they're stuck up on some floor and you can't get to it. You know, they can't come down on you. Then you got a possibility of people, like old people, getting their food stolen while they're there waiting with all their bags. I've seen that happen. And nobody says anything about it. I'll be walking my dog and um, outside the 221 building you'll see a bit, lot of big red holes, like 15 red holes, look like the size of a jar. And you'll see rats, like they playing games, you know. And they'll be running in and out the hole, you know, and if you go towards them, they, they don't even run. 
I feel like I feel like I'm a prisoner. You know, I can't go anywhere. I can't do nothing. Um, I feel like uh, I have no control of my own life. When one time I used to have control of my life, and it does it does a lot of things to me mentally. You know. Also, I would say, clean this place out. You know, clean this, this place is filthy. You know, I feel like the inmates <laughs> at the penitentiary are living better than we are. And that's not fair. In order to set up the discussion, we've invited uh, several residents of uh, public housing in Baltimore City to be with us this afternoon. Uh, first of all, Pauline Watkins is a resident of Lafayette Court, and we're happy to have you with us today. And uh, Ernestine Weidman is a resident of Lexington Terrace. Mm -hmm. Let me first of all, however, point out uh, that uh, you at home can join in our discussion by calling us at 481-1313. That's 481-1313. And we had an also invited another party uh, to the show, uh, that party being a uh, representative from the Housing Authority of Baltimore City, uh, Ms. Juanita Clark Harris, who is the director of the Division of Housing Management. She sent a letter uh, to us, uh, which we received last Friday, and I'd like to just read a a, uh, a breakout uh, from the letter, just a part of it. Uh, while we recognize that there are problems in public housing, particularly in our family high-rise buildings, discussion of only the negative serves to seriously distort the public's understanding of our program. In addition, such a presentation is unfair to those many residents who have benefited from public housing and take pride in their community. We're sorry that uh, Ms. Harris could not be with us today. However, we intend to have our discussion uh, with the residents. Uh, Ernestine, let me just ask you, coming out of the, uh, the tape that you just saw, is that an accurate representation of what goes on in the high-rises of Baltimore City? Yes, but it's a one-sided view. Everything that was shown there was true. But on the other hand, there are things that are going on in our community that we could do that could inspire them to do better things and faster things. Now, we do have rats and roaches, you know, but if there's an immediate problem in your home, then I think there's things that you can do you know, like boric acid for your roaches, corking, um, mice traps if you have that big a problem because mm -hmm. either you have to deal with the problem uh, or you feel that you have to leave and most people can't afford to leave. So you're saying essentially that the residents need to do more on their own? In, in their own home. I think if, if this is my apartment and I'm having roach trouble and I go down to the maintenance office and I say, can I have some roach spray? And they give me roach spray and this doesn't do a sufficient job, then it's up to me to do something else. I can go over and complain, but the roaches are still going to be there with my house. So okay. I say, well, I'm going out and do something better. Okay, I'm going Paul. to. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Pauline, how yeah. do you respond? Okay, first, I'd like to comment on the letter that, uh, what's her name? Juanita Harris. Ms. Harris said. from mm -hmm. the city. First of all, I didn't think she would show up because that's the game they usually play. I wouldn't show up either if I knew I was lying because um, she said it, there's a lot of negative thoughts and it's a lot of people, tenants there that agree that it's positive things. I've been in Lafayette Project for 10 years, and yes, I am filled up with a lot of negative things because management does not care anything about the tenants, the residents, their safety, their health, or anything else. And um, again, about you, you saying about the roaches. Um, sure, you should clean up your apartment, but you can clean up all you want in the project. When you got 11 floors or 14 floors where everybody's stacked on top, one tenant sprays, the roaches go someplace else. You know, they just go and travel backwards and forth. The mice come all through your pipes. So what are you supposed to do about that? Well, I've okay. never had trouble with mice. Well, I have. Before, and I have. ladies, um, I'm glad that you've raised some of the issues. We're just going to take a break right now and mm -hmm. come right back, and we want to get into exactly what you've said okay. and to expand on those points uh, from both okay. sides. If you'd like to join in our discussion, please call us at 481-1313. We're going to take a break and come right back. <laughs>
We're back on City Line, and the subject obviously is uh, public housing in Baltimore City. Pauline, just before we went to a break, you had uh, indicated that management, management being the city in this case, uh, you felt that they were lying. Yes, and they are sorry because, um, for an example, maintenance, um, the elevators are always broke, right? Okay, when the elevators are broke, in Lafayette, there are six high-rise buildings. The high-rise buildings have 11 floors. From the 11th floor to the first floor, there are 100 steps that a person have to walk, either up or down, okay? If you're downstairs, let's say you catch the elevator to go to the store, and um, just to the market. An example is myself. I have three children. One is a baby, a 10-month-old baby. We have gotten on the elevator and went downstairs to go to the market. That's the elevator. I mean, me, the three children, one is in a stroller and a shopping cart. When we come back, the elevators are broken. And the only way you can get upstairs to the ninth floor is to walk that shopping How cart. How long will baby. they? Sometimes the elevators may stay broke for a whole week, and they are claimed that they have called, um, what is it, the elevator the repair elevator people. people. Uh -huh. You know, okay, I have called the maintenance shop and reported the elevators are not working. And they are claimed that they never got a report. So but you're saying that things like elevators breaking down are a regular yeah. occurrence. Yes, now, all Ernestine, of the time. All Ernestine, you said that the there are a lot of things that the residents could do for themselves. That's, that, that's one of the things they can't do for themselves. Absolutely. Somebody else has to come and fix the elevator. Absolutely. You would agree with that, obviously. I would agree with that. Okay. Okay. Let's bring in the caller from my home. Good afternoon. You're live on City Line. Do you have a comment or a question? Uh, yes, good afternoon. Just a comment. Um, for one thing, I think management need to do 90 percent more of what they're doing now and the tenants can do 50 percent of what they're not doing if they both pull together i'm quite sure that they can make it more livable okay ernestine okay. calling Let me get her i have been living here for 10 years i live next to the incinerator and they how about tenants do this i scrub that area because i cannot stand that trash and that filth Okay, the times that I did not scrub, the other tenants on my floor scrub. I mean, you if you we personally do scrub the incinerator? That's right. We have used our soap pad and our bleach. Management does not come and scrub, and that's their job. A lot of times they will not even pick up the trash. If we don't pick it up and clean it up, even the elevators, we scrub and wash them down. They do not do it. Okay, thank you for that call. Let's take another call. Good afternoon. You're live on City Line. Hello? Yes, go ahead, please. Yes, this picture you showed on TV? Yes. Picture the women is correct, and not only that, the management could do more, like the lady said, than what he is doing. The management knows the drug addicts hang outside them buildings, hang in them buildings, and they don't do nothing. I have been to the management myself on numerous occasions and asked him when I got off from work, couldn't he pick up the phone and call the police and call the narcotic people? He acted though he just needed that job for eight hours just to be there to work. Some of the guards who work there had the job because the welfare and gave them the job. They're not in the rest, and they're in with the dope, and they sell dope right out of them booths. And the you're saying that the management sells dope? Yes, they do. Okay. <laughs> yes, they do. And the people is not lying what they're saying on that program. Why do you think there is, other than the fact that you're, you're saying that management is involved in selling, why do you think I didn't say the management was involved in selling. I, I said that the people... Who live in the high-rises. People, the guards, and the people who live in the high-rise. Why is it then that we can't, that uh, something can't be done about it, that it can't be cleaned up? Because the management, the people working in the office will let you know. They just don't come out and say it. They are just there for a job. And they say, tell you they don't want to get involved. You the one have to do the calling. I comes in many days after 4 o'clock and call the police and narcotics people. And the man who Mr. the town them know what's going on up there. All right, when you call the police, do they come? Yes, they do. The narcotic people have really been good. They really have. Okay. They really right. have. And I've been to the man who's on numerous occasions. Okay. He'll know I have. Thank you, caller. Ernestine, you're saying you agree with everything she's saying? Or you well, don't? There are drugs in the area, and um, yes, they will come in. They will definitely come in when there's drugs. They will definitely, I mean, the police and the media will definitely come into any public housing the minute that there's any drugs mentioned, murder, or anything else negative. But if you give a benefit show to benefit those people in your community, you cannot get one line in the paper and you can't get one camera down there to cover it. And that's a positive thing. I work with my community and there's a lot of positive things that go on in our community that we don't get any coverage. Yes, there's rats and drugs and all those negative things. I don't say that these things don't exist. But I don't think this is a basis to um, 
to say, well, this is the way your life is, so everything negative, everything negative, everything negative, because everything is not negative. There's a lot of people that are glad to have those little cement blocks for 52 or $55 a month rent because they can't afford to have nowhere else. You have to have a stepping stone, and okay, public housing look, is it. Not to cut you short, sure, a lot of us cannot do any better, and we have no other place to go. But in not having any other place to go, I don't think it's fair to us to be stacked up like a can of sardines. Okay, we have to ride those stinking elevators that are nasty all the time. Go in management office, their office, you will not see a roach in. The best um, maintenance personnel works for management is spotless in there. Um, the floors are always waxed and clean. And if you got a, a repair job, that, for instance, if your refrigerator goes up in your apartment, you got a baby there. You don't want your milk messed up, you know, to go south. Management don't care about you if their refrigerator go up in that um, rental office because they have a refrigerator, stove, everything that we basically have, they have over there. It's well kept. They'll get over there and fix that, but not for a tenant. Okay. And you, okay. Um, positive. I'm going to take a question from the audience right the high now. rise should not be there, period, okay. because management is lax. That's Mr. Brody, Mayor Schaefer, all of them. They don't give up uh, about nobody. Okay. Nobody. Let me take a question from the audience. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, my name is Lee Patterson. I'm here representing the All People's Congress, an organization who is working with the uh, high-rise strikers and is on their side 100 percent of this issue. I have a comment, and then I have a question. Whatever, whoever the question goes to will, will come to how I feel after I finish my statement. Uh, there's so much talk about crime so much in, in these days. Crime this, crime that, drugs this, drugs that. The best a uh, crime prevention program that a lot of people believe uh, that can put an end to the so-called crime problem is employment. There's so much about locking people up, doing this and doing that. The city has its priorities with... Okay, the, we're going to have to ask you, sir, to kind of get to the point that you want to make okay, because of well, the time restraints. The city, the city has its priorities with the harbor and not enough priorities with the people who actually live there. Um, don't they think that all the money... My question goes to the woman here who's representing the city. Don't you think that... Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I There's think no you one correct. There's nobody the here representing okay. the city. I am a resident well, a of resident, public housing. A resident who, who feels positively about the public housing. That love where I live. I love my home. I like my neighbors. I don't. And I'm going to tell you that, that is wrong in our community, can be corrected if our community itself get off their lazy buns I, and organize themselves to do something about well, it. Well, Everybody do we, do, wants do to do complain. Do we have a question? Well, well, I'd like to finish anything. the question. I can finish the okay. question, please. This is, this is supposed to be freedom of speech here. Now, let's right, go ahead and ask, ask your question. My question is, don't you think that that money that they have all on the Charles City Innovation and all the projects can be used to renovate 1,500 vacant houses for okay. the people in Baltimore that, City it, who need yes. them? Are you making a speech or so. are you That's asking the question? question? I'm asking the question. Okay. Don't you think that they could be straightened? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Let's, let's go. Right, let's take let's another take phone call. Thank you. Yes. Good afternoon. You're live on City Line. Do you have a question or a comment? Yes, I do. Go ahead, please. Um, this is Sarah. I'm calling about the rats and the roaches and uh, the junkies. You can't get in the house for the junkies. They're sitting all on the steps. Okay. Now, we've already talked about that. Do you have anything new to add to the discussion? That has been mentioned several times, in fact. No, I don't. All righty. Thank you for okay, calling thank you. us, though. Can I say okay. something, please? Certainly. Okay, oh, yeah. like, okay, everywhere you go just about, you have a drug problem. The drug problem, I'm not going to say it's not bad and it's not serious. That is not as serious to me as me having to come out my door and look at that nasty incinerator in a tight lot where it's supposed to be an area where the children can play. They cannot play there because there's holes all in the fence and things, you know, and you're afraid because anybody can get off the elevators and hurt your children or yourself. Or when you get on the elevators, you have to be greeted with um, it's a public toilet, the trash that the maintenance man left there that um, he's being paid to clean up. And maybe this trash has been there for a whole week, and okay. all of a sudden they got a wind that somebody might come and get a person. Look at that. So they clean, they clean up for up. visitors. Yeah, that's what goes on. <laughs> you would never come well, in and see what's going up. on. I don't think they cleaned up exactly they, for the oh, city yes, line cameras. Oh, yes, they did. They cleaned up some. You don't live there. I live there. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, that was a little bit clean, but it's still Pauline, filthy. let me take let me take a break now. Let me come back and let you continue, okay? okay. I'm not cutting you off. Let me just take a break. Okay. <laughs> right after this. <laughs> <laughs>
Now here's this week's community calendar. If your group or organization would like to announce an event, please write us in care of City Line, WJZ TV, Television Hill, Baltimore, Maryland, 21211. Or call us for further information at 466 0013 between the hours of 9 and 5. is hell in the high rise it is a discussion of public housing in baltimore city and we're talking with two residents uh, to my immediate left is pauline watkins of lafayette court a resident of 10 years of lafayette court and ernestine weidman a uh, a resident of 25 years mm -hmm. of lexington terrace mm -hmm. um ernestine before the break uh you said and this is not quoting you verbatim but uh something that you said you said that a part of the problem is that uh, the residents won't get off their duffs and do anything about it, implying that they're lazy. Yes. I have heard people who are not residents of public housing say the same thing, and you sound like them. Why do you say it since you're an insider saying that? All right, I say it because, like, um, it's easy for you to pick up a phone and call management and complain. I mean, you have a right to. If there is something that's not going right, then you should call public housing. You should get on their backs. But yet there are certain things like um, when I first moved into the projects, we didn't have an overhaul trash problem because everybody felt inspired. It was new. It was public housing. And boy, we're glad to really have somewhere to live where we can afford to live and raise our kids. But somewhere along the line, everybody morale became um, disoriented because of the media, bad publicity. Now, uh, they talk about the area being dirty. I can remember when those areas were kept immaculate, but half of the problem, I mean, half of the solution was the residents. You know, we had clean blocks. So you see them as the part of the problem. Absolutely. You have to take pride in wherever you live, whether it's public housing or a condominium, hell in the high rise. Oh. You know, down with hell rise. I mean, uh, high rises, we don't need them. But yet they steady building condominiums. They have people next to them, under them, over them, fenced in like prisons. You understand me? But there mm -hmm. you're renting a, I mean, you're buying a piece of rock, and here I'm renting a piece. Okay. And because I'm renting, people seem to say, oh, well, the city's going to dump anything into public housing. Then I think public housing should screen their tenants a little bit more carefully. You understand what I mean? Because I've seen the residents change well, over. What is, what is the screening procedure now? Well, I think it's a There is none. I think okay. they're right. I, I agree is it with that. There is none. Very lax. Is it, is it based on need? Should, should there be? Not yes, really. I think there should be. I think you should be you screened. You either get it or you don't. I okay, think the people should be screened. And it okay, is not based on need. Not really, because there's people in there that, um, no, I'll take that back. Yes, most of us that are there, we are on fixed incomes. Okay, and then you have persons that are working. But in working, they make small amounts of money. They can just barely survive. Okay. So Again, yes, it's a need, but um, it's not no screening period at no. all. All but they they used to be. Your money. Okay, That's let's all. take a break and we're going to come back and continue our discussion on public housing.
We're back on City Line. The discussion is public housing in Baltimore City. And with Pauline Watkins from Lafayette Courts and Ernestine Weidman from Lexington Terrace. And I'm going to go to a question from the audience. Yes, ma'am. Um, good afternoon. My name is Marie Dorsey. Um, I am an activist and also a member of the All People's Congress and the PAM, People's Anti-War Mobilization. I lived in Lafayette Projects myself. Um, my question or comment is directed to Ernestine Weidman. And what I would like to say is, she, yes, yeah, she points out, you know, and says that um, the people is at fault, the residents is at fault. But um, first of all, there is a conspiracy against our people as poor and oppressed, and especially blacks. Do you know that there was a study done with rats one time when they put two rats together? And when they saw that these rats, you know, will multiply, and they wanted to know what effect would this have if this cave I'm become gonna, overcrowded. I'm going to have to ask you to limit it to a question. Okay. We're running short on time. Right, but I'm just letting her know okay. that it's a conspiracy. Do you have a question? Yes, and I want to know how can she expect for people to fight this monstrous problem? The problem is too much for people to actually fight. They got to be be aware that it's a conspiracy against them as a race of people, first of all. Okay, and the United her, States should be held responsible for not meeting the needs of okay, the masses. Let her answer. Okay. Well, I'm not here for uh, to talk about conspiracy. I'm here to talk about public housing. But you should. Now, if there is a conspiracy going on. And you should be aware because you lived there it 25 is, years, and maybe that's why you're not aware. But see, I'm going to tell you, those have been good 25 years for me, and I'm not going to let anyone respond, in this audience uh, turn my head around. Because, see, I know what positive things can do in a community if you are strong enough to stay there and say, look, things are going to be done, and they're going to be done the right way. Now, if you don't do that, ain't nobody else going to do it. Okay. Management's not going to do it. Please. You Thank have to please. make management do what you want, not let management make you do. Okay, okay Paul, I consider you want to myself a very positive resident. I have participated in many activities in my particular project. But you have to be very realistic. Housing is in violation. Um, we have a space and occupancy code where each, oh, wait a minute. The, ho the head of household should have 150 square feet of space, which most of us don't. Each additional occupant one year and older should have 90 square this feet of space. This is what, the space. Baltimore City Housing Code? Right, in Baltimore mm -hmm. City Housing So you housing say the city is in, in violation. I know of persons where it's like adult and maybe six children piled up in one and two bedrooms. That's a health code right there. That's a health violation. Okay, most of the people in public housing and at high rise have severe respiratory problems heart problems, you know, all kinds of conditions, and they should not be packed up, you know, like sardines. Okay, let's take another uh, question from the audience. Hi, you're live on City Line. Hello, do you have a comment? Hello? Yes, go please go ahead. Yes, um, I would like to make a statement in regards to Ernestine. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, okay. please. I lived in public housing for three years. When I lived in there, I had roaches, uh, the tenant underneath me had roaches, mice, and uh, chinches. But before I left out of public housing, I was able to get rid of all of my roaches. Okay, the area around there being dirty, the trash lying around and everything, um, this comes from the tenants. Housing, housing authority does not put all of this trash around. If the tenants will pull together and see to it that their kids or whomever dispose of the trash, put, put it where it's properly supposed to be, then you wouldn't have this problem. And public housing mm -hmm. did enable me to get up on my feet. That was the purpose of me moving in there. And if mm -hmm. they had more positive people there mm -hmm. that are willing to work together, mm -hmm. then it could be a better community. So and you I agree said, with you I, agree I with Ernestine? Community myself. Okay, Pauline, let me okay. ask let me ask you a question. Is there in your in your development is there a, a tenants organization that Suppo looks out for the building? No, just the people that live there. On my particular floor and in our building, we have people that live in that building that has been there the ten years that I have, and we have cleaned and cleaned and you know worked together ourselves. Okay, is this all the tenants? No, because a lot, like I said, a lot of the tenants are sick. They have respiratory problems. You have older people that live in that. What percentage of the tenants it? would you say have joined you in these in these endeavors? We take. It's different times. Okay, like maybe today, me and maybe three people on my floor how many might people work live together. In, how, many, how many apartments in the building? Oh, God, I think it's 110 apartments mm -hmm. in there. All I know is 11 floors, and it's about 10 to 11 apartments on each floor. So you're floor. only talking about one floor of residents right. who are involved. But we, we basically work 
you know, down. But you cannot expect people that are half sick on medications. Most of the time you have asthma people, people with chronic But can't a larger portion things. of those residents be involved? Yes. Yes, but we are the ones that are involved, and we are involved. But even in being involved, okay, like we clean the incinerator. If we don't get out there and clean it, management does not insist that their maintenance personnel lift their mops or brooms to come in there and well, how clean about the that little urge. How about the resident that send their kids to the incinerator and tell them, uh, take the trash to the incinerator. Instead of going behind that kid to see if that kid put that garbage into the incinerator. Okay, that seems to be the most of the time. Okay, let us break in here. Tell you what we're going to do. It can be controlled. Ernestine and Pauline. But first you've got to teach your kids how not to throw We're going to take a break and come right back. you got 5,000 kids throwing trash. It's going to be a mess. We're back live on City Line, and let me tell you, we we very seldom do this, but one of the greatest things about uh, greatest things about uh, live television is that you can make a little bit of a change. And so we're going to continue our discussion on public housing with Pauline Watkins and Ernestine Wideman. And uh, let me go first of all to a question from the audience. Yes, ma'am. Yes, question, sir. Please. My name is Sylvia Foster, and um, I know back in the first part of September, I went to Mr. Franklin. I live in 221 Building too, and I asked him for a transfer for me and my children. I have five children that lives up on the 13th floor, and we do not catch elevators at all, and I do not like to walk the steps. And I indicated to him that I wanted to move out. I wanted a transfer on a lower ground floor. He told me to go. Go ahead. We're back live on City Line, and uh, uh, we've decided to go a little bit longer with our discussion on public housing with Pauline Watkins and Ernestine Wideman. And uh, let me go first of all to a question from the audience. Yes, ma'am. Okay, my name is Sylvia Foster, and I live in 221 Fremont Avenue, Building 2. The first beginning of um, September, I went down to my maintenance man, Mr. Franklin, and I asked him for a transfer because I think I was entitled to one. I have five children, all of them under 10, and I live on the 13th floor. We don't catch the elevators. And so um, he requested me to go and get a doctor's statement for my son because he's an asthmatic where ambulance had to come and walk up the elevator, take him down the elevator, take him to the hospital. Many a times I got sucked on the elevator because with my son, and when he got off, he had went into an asthma attack. This was in September. My doctor wrote this statement to him about my son, telling him to move us immediately from off of the ground floors. I haven't heard nothing yet. He had a letter sent to him on the 14th of September. So therefore, he did not get in contact with me. I didn't get my letter until later. I had to go over there September the 22nd so and ask him. just about two and a half months now. And right, still and I had to response? ask him. I'm waiting for a response. Ain't nobody telling me nothing. I took the letter to the main okay, office. Okay, so you see this as uh -huh. a problem, lack of response. Yeah, and what can I do about it? I mean, I don't want to be staying up there with my five children every time we got to look behind our back because somebody trying to break in our house or something like that it don't make no sense because my children don't catch the elevator they go to school every day and when they walk up the step they taught my son hugs, since yours, let me interrupt you since yours is an individual problem it might be good for you to kind of wait until after the show and we'll see what we can do with That's you not personally an individual problem. well no but we cannot solve her problem here on the air today 
Okay. Well, we can air it. But we can air it, and we'll talk uh -huh. to you after the show. We're not putting you off, but uh -huh. let us talk to you after the show. Okay. Okay. Then. Thank, you. Thank you for sharing okay. that with us. Uh -huh. Okay. Now let's go to a call and uh, take another response from our audience at home. You're live on City Line. Hello. Yes. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, I would just like to make a comment, and that it is that black people we can't take our struggles as a race and let that be an excuse for lack of pride. Right. Anywhere that we live, we're going to have to pay money. I don't happen to live in public housing, but I pay. Three hundred and nineteen dollars a month, and I think that if there's two dumpsters next uh, out there in the parking lot, and I don't have to go walk down thirteen flights of steps either, you know, that you can put that garbage in the dumpster and not next to it. Okay, thank you so much. And they don't deserve that. Thank you for the comment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the audience. Bob mm -hmm. Cheeks. I'm Bob Cheeks from Welfare Rights Organization. A comment and and just a couple of questions the people here probably can't answer. The uh, last speaker uh, spoke about doctors who have said that children need to get out of the high rises for various health reasons. We have other people in the audience and many people. That's not an isolated situation. What is happening is that Mayor Schaefer and this city administration has ignored it. Now I have some questions and I think people need to know who are listening and watching. I have refused to come on this show and sit up here while this lady who is a tenant who is one of the victims that we're talking about, even though she does not see herself as a victim. I'm not going to sit up here and argue with her and play white folks' games, black folk against black folk. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> the people that I asked a question, I asked this question of Commissioner Brody, Mayor William Donald Schaefer, Congressman Perrin Mitchell, uh, Senator Clarence Mitchell, the delegates from the 39th Legislative, Larry Young, Ruth Kirk, yeah. and Elijah Cummings, our city council people out of the 4th District, Kwaisi and Fumi, Michael Mitchell, and Victorine Adams, and out of the 1st District, uh, Mimi DiPietro, John Hammond, and Donald Schaefer. I, uh, uh, Schaefer was John Schaefer what is, and what Donald is the question, Hammond. Bob? My question is, why is it that when we talk about high-rise housing, and the 10,000 people who are in high-rise housing, 90% of whom, over 90% of whom, are people on fixed income, poor people, and most of them are heads of household, female heads of household, and black. Why is this not a greater priority than the inner harbor and sending some fish to Florida? I want the money okay. in the high-rise housing. Right. Now, I know that the people here can't answer that, but that's my question to Mayor Schaefer and the rest of these folks. Well, that's your question to the vacant seat. Let me, yes. let me ask you a question mm -hmm. since I got you here right now. Tell us about the rent strike. All right, the rent strike is something we're going through a process of a legal rent strike, whereas uh, when people file their complaints in writing in cert by certified letter, then they have the right after giving management 30-day notification to withhold their rent and then the court can establish an escrow or they have a hearing in court. All right, so has, far has we the have court estab established the no, escrow account? No, because management now has to take our people to court. But people listening need to understand all they have to do is file that complaint and then we'll get it into court and then they hold their rent. All right, but have, have you had people actually as of December 1st withhold their rent? Yes, we have. We had 128 people sign up. They are able to withhold their rent. I just got back from is Chicago talking to is other high-rise people. Is the red strike that, that, that you're about on. now, is it, it's on? It's on. Is it legal or illegal? It's legal. If the people are withholding their rent and they're paying it into an escrow account other than the court's escrow account, aren't they in danger really of being evicted? No, they're not. No, they're not. Because so far the court, we have not been to court. So people are in no danger if they withhold their rent if they have given the 30-day notification, and okay. we are certainly sure them how to do that. Hey, Bob okay. Chiefs, I'd like for you to stay at the microphone. We're going to take a break, but there are some other questions that we would like to ask you. So if you would, bear with us. Okay. We'll go to a break and come right back.
We're back on City Line discussing hell in the high rise with Bob Cheeks of the Welfare Rights Association and uh, Pauline Watkins and Ernestine Weidman. And uh, Bob Cheeks has a call, by the way, so we're going to put him in touch with the caller. Thank you for calling City Line. Yes, I want to make a uh, statement that I think Bob Cheeks makes excuses for us blacks having pride in ourselves. I agree with one of the ladies sitting there that we can do better about keeping our areas clean. I've lived in a place where I had to move out after living there eight years when people called Section 8 moved in. And their statement was, it's not mine, I don't care. Bob, do you want to respond? Uh, just a very quick response. That's, you know, that's historical when people, anytime you start fighting back, if you're poor people fighting back and somebody stands up and says you have a right to fight back, all of a sudden you're making excuses for folk. I don't see people saying the same thing when other folk fight back that they're making excuses for them. So I'll just, you know, those type of things we just ignore. We're going to go on with the fight no matter what they say. I resent that. I fought back. Mm -hmm. Okay, you were okay. one, you were one of the million. You know, um, not one in a million, one of the thousand. There are a few people that have been very successful in getting out of the public high rise, and some of them still live there. But you have to be very realistic. Look at all of the thousand that are still there. They are not successful. We are not making any kind of headway at all. And we are positive. And you keep harping on the fact that we are not positive. We are lazy. We are not clean. We are, uh, quite to the contrary, Miss. I am very clean. I am very positive. That is but the high rise okay. is not no place for humans to live Let at all. Let the caller respond to you. <laughs> caller? Caller, if you could, would you could respond, but very briefly. Okay. You do not have to get out. I'm just saying do better while you're there. I am doing the I, best that I can. And okay. you live there. I'm back. You, you live there. And it, let's switch places. I, I'm Let's black. Places. I'm black, and I was there. Black. I'm not talking I'm, about being black, lady. I'm talking about anybody that lives in the Thank high you. rise. Black does not have anything to do with that. Okay, I'm not here me... to argue with you. I'm just. I'm not arguing. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you for, for your comment. call. Very, very much. Bob Cheeks. Yeah. All right. We've heard a lot today about problems of the high rise. We've had a few positive things also about the high rises. What? I mean, the rent strike is one thing. I mean, what can you realistically all right, accomplish? Some, there, all right, there are some things that can be accomplished. The first thing is that the, the rent strike is just a means of people fighting back, that they have a right to fight back, and that's the way to do it, one of the ways to do it. The other thing is that um, one of the other uh, people who spoke talked about the health people. I have a letter here from a pediatric uh, doctor who indicates that a nine-year-old is the, the housing that he lives in, in high-rise housing, is contributing to his, his health uh, problem. So we have the city health department and other people, like the lady who just called, she could be very helpful. If she got out, she knows what it's about. Rather than blaming the people who are still there, then let's join together and help, uh, yeah, but, help but, get but them isn't, out. But isn't this really more a political issue than it is anything else? Political, Everything. Political small p. Oh, political. yeah, No, I no, so. no, it's, it's political. Yes, it is political. Well, I mean, if you're going to get your way, you're going to have to get people on your side. Sure right. we do. But here's the thing. It is a political issue. It was a political issue 25, 28 years ago when they developed these houses. It was a political decision to put certain people in there. It was a political decision that these folk would be black folk and people on public assistance. It is a political decision. So the solution is also political. But what we're trying to do now, because we understand that when we go to court, that that is also a political arena, even though they talk about it's a legal arena. But we have a proposal before this city right now. And our proposal is that you move families with children and senior citizens out of high-rise housing. You retain the high-rise housing for people who do not have children and who do not have physical handicaps. You renovate that housing. You put ten to fifteen thousand dollars into the fifteen hundred vacant houses out here that the city presently owns. The mothers, like the mothers sitting here and the mothers out there and families, then would own that house. They would not have to pay the rent. And we also want a law passed that no other people with children shall ever go That's into right. high-rise housing okay. in Baltimore City. That's right. Right. Uh, the solutions sound obviously workable, but who's listening to you? I, what are the possibilities of any of this getting through? The possibilities are as good as the sense of the people who are listening and the humanity of the people who are listening. If we have people who are going to be bought off to the point that they'll come on and talk against their own people, if we have elected officials that are not going to be put at political risk, and we have some elected officials who are understanding, like Mimi DiPietro. Yes. We met with him, and he's very 
very supportive of this type of thing. Who are some of those who are not supportive? So far, we have... Only lip service. Well, we had a meeting the other day, and some people did not show up. We don't know why. Uh, uh, Councilman Mitchell did send a representative uh, to the meeting. Uh, Agnes Welch was there, and Mimi DePietro. Who did not show? Uh, the people who did not show was Kwaisi and Fumi, who was supposed to be there. We don't know why he did not show. Uh, John Schaefer and Hammond from the 1st District did not show. Now, we have also talked to, I have talked to Congresswoman um, Barbara Mikulski's office, because three of these buildings are in her district. I've talked to uh, Congressman Cl um, Perrin Mitchell, and we have not gotten any type of help from so that quarter. So what are the possibilities, then, of getting any changes, legislative changes or any pressure that to, to okay. brought to bear the that pressure, the changes? The pressure that has to be brought to bear is from the tenants themselves. And from we have other organizations that we have been in contact with. All People's Congress, they have spoken today. The NAACP, I've spoken to them. We are going to be meeting with them. The National Organization of Women, the Women League, uh, League of Women Voters, uh, Nation of Islam, the Moore Science Temple, all of these groups, we are appealing to all of them in a sense of humanity and justice to get on this issue here. They okay, may came up with something different. The, I'm not the, sure. Bob, Bob let, let me just go to, to, to politics now with a, with a capital P. We talked okay. about getting support. You ran for city council in the 4th yes. District. You, you lost in the, in the primary election. You ran as the write-in candidate. Yeah. You, you, the voters, this was one of the major issues that you brought up. The voters yeah. that you tried to get the support from basically rejected you. What, did, what do you think now is the possibility of city councilmen who have been elected now. That was a good shot, Dan, but I'm not going to let you get away with it. Take it. Take All your right. shot. <laughs> uh, in the fourth, in the fourth councilmanic district, we ran. Um, we got more votes probably for the first time than anyone who ever ran for the first time in the fourth councilmanic district, spending less than a thousand dollars. Even though Mayor William Donald Schaefer gave Michael Mitchell eight thousand okay, dollars. We're, we're, we're very, we're, we're very okay. proud of that. My point, okay. though, though, Bob, is not is not to criticize. Right, who's listening? My point is not to say that you lost. My point is to say that how can you now expect to bring this issue before the council where the decision has to be made? No, no. And this have them support no, you. No, it doesn't. This decision is not, the city council can do some things. They can pass that law that I was talking about, but it's not the city council. The city council is not the culprit in this one. This is Mayor William Donald Schaefer, the man who controls the budget of this city and the Board of Estimates. That fund that they have over there with those two folk that are running this fund that have $200 million in it, that trustee trustees. fund, mm -hmm. all right? That's where this issue is right now. That's where the money is. All the city council can do is give us some support and maybe help articulate this issue with the mayor. Let me make one quick question because we're, we're quickly running out of time, even though we've devoted the entire show to this. And I'm going to ask you this, Bob, and ask you to make your remarks brief. I'm quoting from a letter that you, which is a position paper, and it says, it is now obvious to us, meaning the, uh, the Baltimore Welfare Rights Organization, after long discussion with city officials, that there is a deep disrespect and disregard for the health and safety of low-income women and children. Is this the bottom line to what you feel? That's the next to the bottom line. The bottom line is that we're not going to sit back, no matter whether it's legal or illegal, we're not going to sit back and let it continue. But you think there is a gross disregard it is a and disrespect. disrespect. And it's not just in the, black, uh, in the white community, it's also in the black community. When we have middle-class black folk that don't care anything about what happens to people who are in high-rise housing. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Thank you Bob for Bob Cheeks, thank you. Thanks for coming us. on. Uh, Ernestine, let me attempt to give you almost the, next, the last <laughs> word. Thank you. Uh, we have, uh, let, me, let me apologize, uh, first of all, to T. Montier and Tim Watts for dropping their parts of the show. Uh, we thought that this was so interesting. We did want to continue it. And uh, those of you who were looking for the entertainment page or looking for the newscast, we'll make sure that we put those on at some time in the very near future. Ernestine, where do we go from here? Well, uh, Bob Cheeks, uh, a couple of months ago when he was running for election, I never really had heard of him, but that don't mean that he wasn't there. But I find that in the election year, snakes come from under the rocks, and they usually use us as their yeah. way of getting the votes over to the people. Now, Bob Cheeks came into our community, he seen more in one day than I have in 25 years. Well, honey, and wait, you must wait a minute. Be now, I think, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think, I, now, you okay. talk I, I think, I think what I'm really trying to do is wrap up as opposed to, no, to open the room again. I'm talking about my community. Let me just I'm talking about Bob Cheeks coming into my community and saying that he see this, he see that. Because it's a political year. He wants to be put into office. We are really out. I mean, there are a lot of people that are out of time. That should do things other than. Coming up, coming up next week on City Line, for those of you who are listening. Roy Ayers, <laughs> Roy Ayers live in our studio.
famous jazz artist. <laughs> That's this week's edition of City Line. I'm Dan Henson. <laughs>